have a, a screen there, so uh, you should have probably brought your Bibles uh, to church. Yes. <laughs> um, I was just uh, thinking about, well, actually, what we're going to do is something a little different on, on Bible study night from now on, that we're going to... Um, be starting the same time, but we're going to probably be ending earlier, you know, uh, just for the sake of it's in the middle week and you got kids and stuff like that, and so we're going to, uh, you know, just sing a couple songs, you know, unless the Holy Spirit moves in a different direction, that's, you know, we're going to let him, you know, but if it's the direction he's going to move for us in Bible study, we'll make it a Bible study for uh, getting into the Word of God, uh, and it tends to come out some deep stuff. That you have, if you notice that, some deep stuff will come out, and all. And uh, uh, I'm a little bit more mellow when I'm ministering. Uh, different anointings that takes place depends on the people that are here. Uh, I don't know. There was a different, totally a different kind of anointing that was on me that I ministered. They had me minister at the luncheon on Tuesday, and uh, uh, you know how you go like you did Thursday and like that. Man, I saw a side of me that I, don't, I haven't seen for a long time. Wow. Pablo says, as he says, man, he goes, uh, he goes, you should do that in church. I said, well, there are different anointings that, that God has, that I've experienced in my life, and I, I, I do a lot. Most of my anointing is teaching and, and preaching, and, uh, and, I, and I like to teach, but I like to preach, put some fire there. But uh, Tuesday was more like some of you guys, I, you know, as you see me here in the church, you don't see me do that. You didn't see me, you didn't see that happen over there, did it? No. Yeah. I mean, it came out so fiery, I was like, oh my God. It, and and it's like, it was coming just as fast as, it was, it was called, that's what they call that as like a, 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 an evangelistic uh, uh, anointing. That was there. It was for the time of the people there. You can only have a certain amount of time. You have to put it out there real quick. Boom, 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 and then out. And and that's the way it came out. And all. And after I finished, it's like I go, wow, what was that? <laughs> it surprised me too. And uh, but it was but it was good. It was good. I, I just I just love the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, it, it just. That's, that's what I depend upon to be able to minister uh, correctly the Word of God. And uh, I, I really believe in God for you to receive an understanding of what, of what the Scripture says. And that's why I like to uh, break down some things that the Holy Spirit brings to us here, even tonight. And one of the a subject matter I'm going to bring uh, forth that's probably going to go for this Thursday and, and next Thursday. And we'll see where we'll go from there. But... Um, it's called uh, the power of confession uh, to become. The power of confession to become. To become what? What do you think? What do you think it is? To become what? Yeah? Okay, God, Jesus adopted us. All right? He adopted us to be what? Okay, sons and daughters. All right. We as believers need to understand the position that God has placed us in. We need to understand it. And the reason for, as sons and daughters, and the reason for that is because the, if we don't, the enemy will always have his way with us. Amen. And we'll, we'll be children tossed to and fro and carried about with all kinds of doctrines. In all kinds of moods, in all kinds of ways that it's all around us. And, and this is the time that we are not to be moved at all. We're going to have to learn as believers to become steadfast. As the scripture says in, in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And, and so, and this is the thing... And, and actually a characteristics that is required for believers. That it says, moreover, it is required in stewards. That's what we are. Stewards, that a man be found faithful. Faithful. 
God has, God has given us a responsibility upon planet Earth to fulfill His purposes that He has for our lives. Each one of us has a purpose to fulfill. Don't come to church just to come to church. Come to church to receive and then find and locate what you have been called to do because we are to be faithful to something. Yes. Come on. Faithful. And so what is what it is is that God desires us to mature, to grow up. So I was ministering, uh, a teaching in my class uh, this morning on uh, discipleship training. And, I've been, I, and I teach on the discipleship aspect of it and what the qualifications are. And, and what that is is that we've got to, we've got to, a disciple is one that has to imitate, it has to follow. And the one we follow is, is vital for us to develop a relationship, a closeness so we can follow effectively. And then as we follow and follow and follow him and follow him, then what happens is that we're becoming, we're becoming the one whom we are following. And that who we are following, it gets on us. And then we become a reflection of who we're following. That reflection is this. It is the character of God. And so what people would see, they would see the God in us Come instead on. of just seeing us. Come on. It's like sometimes, uh, I remember years ago, uh, there's families that say, well, you know, I need to spend a whole lot of time with my kids, a whole lot of time. You know, they, they need me and all. You know what? They don't need more of you. They need more of the God in you. Come on. That's what kind of God are you giving them? So it's not, you know, get, get, getting involved, with, you know, I'm not against sports or anything, but they put them in all kinds of sports, get them all busy doing this and doing that and all, but how about the God? How about getting involved with, with God? They need to see, see, we're coming to a place where God is calling people to become hungry for Him. Yes. Hungry. As I saw, as I saw Tony come up here, your daughter, and and it's like, I saw a whole bunch of youth doing that. I just saw it. It was like a glimpse. I just saw that. And then the word came to me, just standing there, the word came to me, I am making some adjustments. Just leave it up to me and just trust me. So don't try to make things happen. Just allow God to make, to do what he is good at doing. Because unless, unless God builds a house, we all labor in vain who build it. Come on. Right? See, so that's why it, it is so important for us that we need to get it together ourselves. We, if there's things that is out of order, stop. Get it in order. Don't go and just say, okay, well, you know, one day I'm going to get it. I know what God's doing. I know how God's dealing with me. I know there's areas of my life that I need to straighten out in. Well, if you know it, then do something about it. Hallelujah. Because there is never, there is not an, a, a, a perfect time. The perfect time is when you are aware of it. Right. That's the perfect time. Wow. But that means something. That means that as Jesus said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. He's your helper. That means that if you are aware of what needs to change, the Holy Spirit is there standing by, red, waiting for you to make the move for change because he's not going to do the work. It's him being the helper, as Jesus referred to him, helper. He is there to help us do what God's called us to become. Amen. 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 Our transformation to live there is dependent upon the power out of our confession. We can do one thing and say something else. Come on. I know my dad didn't know any better, but years ago when we were kids growing up, he said, just he would always say, uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I know some of you ever had that growing up. This is man. Yeah, I'm not alone. <laughs> You know, obviously, what, what talks louder is your life. So you say this, but you don't do what you say. And so what, what we follow is what a person does, especially as kids. 
We mimic them. Whether it's right or wrong, we mimic them. And this is the reason why he said God tells us, as, even as disciples, he, said, he says this, he says now, as he left, the, he commissioned us, and he says, go and, uh, and teach, make, make, uh, make disciples out of all nations and teach them to observe all the things that I taught you. Well, we teach by how? By example. Okay, we can't follow or we can't lead unless we learn to follow. Right? So if we stand in a place of leadership, then we need to learn how to follow. Parents, as you stand in a place of leadership for your kids, you got to learn how to follow the master. Because the master will help you to, to lead your, your family. Amen. Not the way you think. He'll also reveal unto you what your, what your kids are called to do. He'll, you'll be able to locate what their giftings are, and then you'll be able to come alongside to help them in their giftings. Amen. Now, our transformation, again, is, de is dependent upon what we say. Because what we say is where we will go. Our bodies, research has already said this, that our bodies respond to what we say. If a lot of negativity comes out of your mouth, your body will release negative chemicals, which is poisonous. So most of the reasons that takes place of our sicknesses and diseases is due to the fact of what comes out of our mouths. Quiet. Scripture says this in John chapter 1, verse 12. We're familiar with it. But as many as received him to them, he gave the authority. He gave the authority or the right. Say the right. the right. Okay, so he gave us the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Okay. Children of God, that means that if I'm his child, and I'm a man, I'm a boy, I'm a male, therefore makes me his son. Amen. If you're female, that makes you his daughter, right? So now, we're sons and daughters. He says, he has given us the right to become. Now, this means that even though we know that we're sons and daughters, Yet, our life doesn't line up to it often. Because when fear comes, or our insecurities come, or our doubts come, and we wonder, why did God allow this to happen? Then what we're doing is that we're questioning our relationship with Him. And we're not really sure about our sonship and our daughtership. We're not, we're not sure about it. This is the way God wants us to be. When a, little, when a child comes into the world and grow up one year old, two years old, they don't worry, they don't worry about food when they're going to get their next meal. They don't worry about bills. Right? And what does Jesus say that what the kingdom of God is made up of? Children. Children. All right. What are we to be? We are to come to God as a child. What is that? It's like childlike faith. Kids will believe anything you say. I used to, I used to tell my kids, uh, you know, I was invincible, playing around, of course, but they actually believed it. I says uh, during that time it was the uh, Incredible Hulk, you know, kind of kind of thing. So I'd get them both, they're about, I don't know, two, three, four years old, and I'd pick them up by their pajama. My wife put, would put on the pajamas with feet on it, so it was a thick pajama. And so I'd pick them up, and I'd say, look at this, and I'd pick them up like that. And I think my wife took some pictures of that, you know. And, and they really believed it, <laughs> you know? And it's because they're, they're, they're little, they don't know any better. 
And I was invincible, man. I was tough. I was strong. <laughs> and uh, so some of that stuff was a little balanced too, because you know I was still a lot of I still had a lot of flesh in there that God was still dealing with in my life, and all. But it was a lot of macho type of thing, and I wanted my son to be a macho type of guy. And so when I would get down on the ground sometimes, and I play with him, fight with him, or something, and I'd hit him, play him, hit him in the face or something like that, not hard or anything. Then I tell him, "Come on, hit me." He would hit me, get used to it and stuff. Next thing you know, he goes and gets some of the kids, you know, uh, that are visiting and stuff, and clan members, and he goes and beats them up, you know. And it's like, oh shoot, <laughs> think it's all right. So I realize, hey, you know, what are they doing? They're just believing. They believe it's all right. They believe it's okay to do, be that way and this that, and that, and all, you know. And it's like. And I have nothing to do with how he turned out at the end. I'm not the end. It's still not the end. He's back. He's out of gangs and stuff like that. But but the thing is, is that is that this is what I'm trying to get at. Is that we we've got to mimic our father. Amen. We've got to place keep ourselves in the place of sons and daughters. That I'm a son. Okay. So now that means that. I don't have to worry about if he's going to take care of me or not. I don't have to worry about if my bills are going to be taken care of. I don't have to worry about if I'm going to have enough money. I don't have to worry about I'm going to trust my father because in that place of trusting my father, he's going to give me peace so I can see what I need to do on my part to make money, to get a job. See, because when we are worried, we can't see clearly. We, then we start operating out of desperation. And you know what? You don't, want, you don't want your kids to worry, little kids to worry. You don't want them to worry. But oftentimes, adults today, and I see so much of it, they damage their kids. They, they see a lot of worry goes on in their lives, and, and they over there get worry on them too. And they get filled with anxiety themselves because they're taking on what is in leadership is it's getting on to them also. And they're finding out that a lot of children are experiencing stress that wasn't that way years ago among kids. Now it is on their kids. Now kids are experiencing different kinds of sicknesses and diseases at a young age. But it's, it's stress-related, coming from leadership. This is the reason why it is vital for us to get in there and come in line with our Heavenly Father and begin to learn what it is to trust Him, to know I'm His son, and there's nobody, nobody is going to define me. I'm not, I don't need anybody to define me. I don't need anybody to try to even encourage me and say, oh, things will be okay. I just need the encouragement from God. I just need to hear from God. I need just to believe His Word Amen. and what He says. Because there are people that are not going to be around you all the time to try to keep you pumped up. You need to encourage yourself with His Word. If you're, you, you know yourself, if you're starting to slip into, de into depression or into discouragement, you know when it's happening. You know when it's first happening. Preach. But then where is your Heavenly Father in your heart? He's not going to let you go there. But if you choose to go there, He can't even stop you. This is the reason why it is, it, it's important for us to get a hold of what God's Word says and hang on it. Grasp hold of it. Because there is something that is taking place while we're holding on to God and we're believing God and we're trusting God. What's happening is that even though I know I'm his, I'm his son, I'm his daughter, even though I, you know that, that what is happening is that your mind and everything else is starting to come in line with it to actually believe it. Let me show you. In fact, that word, to become, means this, to come into existence to undergo change and development. We are under development right now. We have, none of us has arrived yet, but we're being developed 
by the power of the Spirit using the Word of God that we will believe. But the Holy Spirit can't use the Word if we don't believe it. We have to believe it first. He's not going to push that Word on us until we actually believe that Word. But the thing is, that when you believe that word, you become what you believe. Think about this. Through this experience of becoming children of the living God, think about it. We were walking down a path of death. The wrath of God was even upon us. Okay, we were doomed for hell. That's that, that's, that's what man's old nature, that's where we came from. Okay, certain judgment. Jesus took the judgment. It was placed upon him. All the wrath of God was placed upon Jesus, even though he didn't sin. It was our sin. Okay. Then he goes and he says, now you've been justified. Now, as we were walking that path, there was a divine incision that took place. You know when you go and you have surgery and they cut you? They're making it, what do they, they call that? An incision. They're cutting. All right. That's what happens. When, in fact, when did that divine incision take place in your life? When did it take place? The moment you what? The moment you what? Confess. Confess. You're right. <laughs> now you're starting to doubt. <laughs> okay, all right. I was waiting to hear somebody else. Yeah, <laughs> all right. The moment you confessed. Okay, why? Because God's word says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's for who? Whoever. Jesus died for the world. And who's in the world? Yes, people. All right. So the opportunity for every person to get saved is their present. But not all will be saved. Why? Because they do not confess. But they don't confess because they do not believe. Now watch. Scripture, Romans 10, beginning with 8. I think about this, that the moment I confess that Jesus disrupted my life, the moment you confess Jesus disrupted the direction that you were going. Come on. We were going down the path of destruction. The moment we confess Jesus, the path, you change, you change direction. You made a 180 degree turn and you started going down instead of the path of destruction, the path of what? Righteousness. Yes, the path of life. Mm -hmm. See, narrow is the way that leads to life and few go by, go there. But yet the whole world has an opportunity to be saved. But yet it says, broad is the way that leads to death and destruction. And many will go there. That means that's without number. That is sad. That's sad. But why is it? Somebody gave, asked a question uh, in, in my class and they said, well, doesn't it say that many are called but few are chosen? I said, the only reason why, if you look at the context of it, the only reason why it says few are chosen is because not all are willing to give up their own life. They're not willing. You can't add God to your life that you're living. You can't add to it. There are the, Indi the, the those in India, from India, they, they worship 300 million gods. And you know what? If you bring Jesus to them, they'll add Jesus to the picture. And what you have to do is that you have to tell them they have to deny all of those gods. Any god that they believe, they have to deny it. You don't add, you don't add to what you believe. You, you take away what you were believing and place
place all your belief upon him. Amen. That's the only way Christianity works. Christianity works in its fullness when we give up everything. Come on. And see, I believe that this is the place that the body of Christ is in right now is that he is working with believers to give up. If you're worrying about something, give it up. Come on. It's not worth worrying. Right. It's not worth uh, walking in fear. It's not worth it. Give it up. So if you give up fear, you'll, you'll take on love, which I've been talking about. I started talking about it last Sunday. Because that, that, that's exactly what we need. We need love because love makes us complete. And when we actually know that God loves us, we're not going to worry. Come on. If we really believe that God loves us. Whenever we have things that come at us, oftentimes, you know, during the day, you know, you don't expect it. You got this, you got that. Also, you feel yourself getting frazzled or razzled up, you know. Uh, you know what? What you got to do is, wait, 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 wait. Let's take this one thing at a time. Three. You got to do it. God's not going to do it. And God didn't throw all that at you. It's a, it's a way, because remember, he's the prince of the power of the air. It's a way to, for, for us to get all messed up so we lose sight of the one we're trusting. It's a fight every day. But now, let me go back for a moment. When I say... Those that even struggle with depression, you know when you get depressed, and if you stop and think, think about what you're thinking on, because that is, and that is going to be the answer of what is causing you to become depressed. So what do you do with it? It's amazing. They hold on to it. It's like you get a high over it. Because we get, they get so used to living that way. Get away from that quickly because that's where the enemy will begin to dictate your life. Is God still there? Yeah. Does he still love you? Yeah. But he can never show you how much he loves you when you choose that direction. So if we stay in the path of life, we can always, we can always experience the love that is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It is constantly being poured into us. You know, when I get, I look at the things that is gloomy out there, but yet inside I get excited. <laughs> Why do you get excited? Because nothing gets past God. It's not something that, whoops, 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 I didn't expect this, I didn't expect that. You know, okay, I got to come with another plan, another plan, another plan. No, no. God already has, God already has a plan. It's already set in place. The Bible says that he laughs at those that think they got it all together. <laughs> he says that because you don't trust me, sudden destruction will come upon you. Read, Read Proverbs chapter 1, says it. <laughs> now watch. What is the word, verse 8? The word is near you. Where is it? First of all, it says here, according to the scripture, the word is near you in your mouth. It's in your mouth and in your heart. What is it? It's the word of faith. The word of faith. Not the word of doubt, but the word of faith, which we preach. Okay. I'm preaching to you, not words of doubt, but words of faith that you can actually feed off of. What is that for? To get into your heart so you can believe it so it can come out of your mouth because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Right? So you fill your heart with it over and over again, which a few weeks ago I, I, I ministered on meditation. Meditation over and over and over again. What? To get it into our heart so the Holy Spirit can write it in there and plant it so it can bear fruit. So that way we can talk right. So now, if you want to know where your heart is at, listen to what, the way you talk, conversations that you have. Right. Amen. And you can actually hear yourself talk, talk, talk words of doubt, words of fear. 
And oftentimes you may say, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Okay, so we made a mistake. God's not going to condemn us for it. But one thing we need to do is that, hmm, it's not quite set in my heart yet. I need to get it set in my heart so that what will come out of my mouth is not a whole bunch of cuss words. <laughs> right? You know, if you have problems with, with cursing, okay, realize if you come to God, things are going to change around, you know, it takes some time to change around. But the only thing is, is that if you have problems with it five years from now, ten years from now, then there's something wrong with receiving the word. Because the word will transform you and transform the way we talk. Are you getting nervous? Good, you're talking right. <laughs> uh, I don't recall, I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm better than anybody, but I realize that one thing is that even if I stub my toe or whatever, you know, or you know, things are happening and tense and stuff, I've, I've not had any of that stuff come up for years and years and years. Why? So I'm filling it up with here, right here. Just coming and filling it up. I may say something like maybe, shoot. Okay. Oh, man, that hurt. You know, but I'm not cursing. You know, I'm not blankety blank blank bank. What is that thing being in the way? Why would you put that in the way for? You know. Oh. But see, what comes out, is what comes out of our mouth is for us to be able to identify what needs to change inside of us. Did you hear that? Yeah. It identifies of what needs to be changed. See, I, that's why I thank God that through the changes and the process of change that takes place, that God is not condemning me. God is not putting me down for, for the things that I'm going through. God just, just loves me and loves me. And you know, you may beat yourself or you may get upset with yourself, but you know what? If you stop and think, God still loves you. You're still his son. And just encourage yourself that you're his son. You're his daughter. Encourage yourself with those words. And you know what? All the negativity will go away. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now watch. He says that if you confess with your mouth, you confess with what? Mouth. With your mouth. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart one believes in, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Now watch. It says, uh, for with your heart one believes and unto righteousness. That word righteousness is who we are. That is our that is our position, righteousness. We are sons and daughters of righteousness. Amen. Not sinners, but righteousness. That means that we have been justified and declared righteous. We didn't earn the righteousness. It is it was given to us by grace. Amen. Jesus earned the righteousness for us. So he calls us righteous. Abraham received righteousness when he said, when, when he declared uh, Abraham, he believed me, so therefore I declare him righteous. Right. He believed what God said. He believed him all the way. As a matter of fact, when God told Abraham, leave your city, leave your town, leave your place, that means he had to leave a big portion of his family because in that area, there was idolatry. And he says, leave that place and I'm going to give you a place to go. Abraham went with not knowing. He didn't go and say, well, God, you got to show me. You got to show me your plan. You got to show me where it's at. You got to show me what, you, what you're going to give me. Are you sure you're going to give me? Let me put a fleece out there. He didn't do that. He believed God. Then when he told him you're going to have a son, he believed God. Yeah. He didn't doubt God. Even though he went, 
through some of the challenges. It was a lot of his flesh, but he still continued to believe God. We go through the same things of the challenges of our flesh, but as long as we keep on still feeding our faith, feeding our faith, feeding our faith, that we will believe it and we will rise above and we will begin to feel, to fulfill our righteousness, our right standing with God. When we believe God, we God declares us righteous in right standing. We are in right standing with God. That means that as long as I'm walking in right standing with Him, God can fulfill what He needs to fulfill in my life Amen. to bring about the changes so I can learn to become who He is. So that's why I've got to keep my mouth right. But the only way I can keep my mouth right is that, is that I've got to I've got to line my heart up with His Word, so out of it will come His Word. Amen. Because remember, His will is His Word. So if I want to, if so many Christians have said, "I need to know the will of God," I need to know the will of God, but then they don't even do what they're supposed to do, and that is to meditate upon God's Word and get that Word inside of you, so you can be a fulfillment of His will. So then you can say, Father, not my will, but your will be done. So each day, you step aside and say, God, I'm here to fulfill your will. Next day, I'm here to fulfill your will. God, I've been created to be a fulfillment of your will. Amen. But the thing is that we're going to receive benefits out of it, too. Well, peace, joy, huh? Love, man, well-balanced life, soundness of mind. When everybody's flipping out, that I get that experience, soundness of mind, well-balanced, no fear. Oh, come on, you gotta live in a, in a, we don't live in that kind of a world. Well, that's right, we don't live in that, that kind of a world because we come from the kingdom. Jesus says, we're not of this kingdom. We've got to remember that. We've got to remind ourselves, we're not of this kingdom. So he says, don't operate like this kingdom. And don't talk like that kingdom. You used to talk that way. Now don't, talk, don't keep talking that way. Because you'll keep that kingdom alive. Preach. Wow. We, need to keep, we need to talk God's kingdom. That's what brought salvation to us. The word of God went out. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word is still going out Hallelujah. to the world. It's been going out thousands of years. It's been going out, out, out like that. And it's still in the air. And it is waiting for somebody that will confess. In other words, Come, confession is saying the same thing. Come into agreement with what that word says. But you got to know what that word says in order to come into an agreement with it. And when you come into an agreement, you're coming into a, a, an agreement with, uh, with power that will cause you to become saved. And the enemy can't even stop it. That same power it was is... The same power of that word, that confession of that word, was the worlds were created by it. Come on. And we're made in the image, and God created us in the same manner. For so our lives to become an experience change is that we've got to talk it. We've got to say it. Amen. That's why the scripture tells us death and life, death and life are the power of the tongue. And those that love it, whichever one, those that love it will eat its fruit. So if you're talking a whole lot of negative stuff and you wonder how come negative things are around you, you're only reaping what you're sowing. Because words are seeds that you put for your future. So if you want to change your future, you need to change what you say. I can't even go any further. 
Somebody leave you hanging. No. Take what I've told you here tonight. Because take it seriously. Take it seriously. Because I was getting ready to go into something, but it's gonna, I, need, I need time for this. Because I want to go into Deuteronomy. That it says the same thing that is said here. But it also said the same thing in the New Testament. What it said in the New Testament. What that is in that part of the New Testament. That it, that it says that the word is near you, even in your mouth. Well, Deuteronomy said the same thing there. You see, so the thing is, they didn't have really quite understanding of that in the Old Testament because they weren't born again. You see, now we can have the understanding that's available for us because we're born again of the Spirit. And now we have the Holy Spirit that can give us that understanding. Moses had an understanding of it, okay? But the only thing is, is that he had that understanding but even then, he was limited because, let me tell you why. Because in the New Testament, it says in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, it says, we see the glory that was upon Moses, but there is a glory that exceeds what Moses experienced. So if you think we look at Moses, and we even look at the Ten Commandments in the movies, and we say, wow, look at all that. Look what God did through him and all that. That's nothing. What the Bible says, that's nothing compared to what we got today. Yeah. Wow. The church is not is barely tapping into it. Come on. That's why being a Christian is really more exciting because there's more to more to it than what's being presented. There's more to God than what's being presented. There's a lot to know about God. When I went through things in my life and I went through the difficulties in my life, you know what? I found another side of God that I didn't realize, even though I preached about it. I, I had talked to others about it, but yet it became real to me. And that was his love and his mercy and his grace. I saw that side of him that, that yeah, I preached it, but now it became so real to me. Why? The only time I was able to get that is when I went through the hard times of my life. The only way you're going to get to know God in his fullness is that you're going to have to go through the hard things. Because going through the hard things is where our flesh dies. See, fire purifies. As John the Baptist said, that I baptize you with water. But there's one who's coming, who's referring to Jesus, who's coming, who will baptize you with, with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And you know what? We don't like fire. But the Bible says that when you are purified, and we're purified and we stay there until there is a reflection yeah. of, that, of that goal, yeah. the trying of our faith, reflection. And what we see is a reflection of who God is. Yeah. But we go to the fire until we see that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know what the jeweler has to do? He has to purify before he puts it together and all. He has, to be, he has to go through the fire and burn it and burn it and burn it until there's reflection. That's what God does with us. We burn, that's why they're children of Israel. That's what God wanted to do with them. And that's why they went around the, cor around, around the corner. Yeah, they went around the wilderness over for 40 years because he was trying to fire, he was, had the fire trying to burn it out of them. He tried to burn Egypt out of them. Come on. They still had Egypt. Yeah. And he, he took them out of that. And so many people have have their past life, and they feed on it. And sometimes, some of you guys out there in the mission, you guys said, if you give testimonies, man, don't dwell on your testimony. Dwell on what God's done to bring you out of. Amen. Don't elevate your testimony and say, well, I did this, and I beat this guy. Seems like everybody at the mission has been all fighters, and they beat everybody down. They're all tough. So, oh my God, they're all tough. <laughs> You know, I don't lose the battle. Wow, wow. I guess there's a lot of, you know. Because guess what? You're human, you're flesh, you bleed, you're hurt. Same as anybody else. You are, you, we are invincible. You know? The only one that's invincible is the God that we serve. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, stand to your feet. Did you get something? Yes. Okay, what'd you get? <laughs> Yeah. Change your talk. Yeah. 
Change the talk, walk your walk, and your body will eventually line up to it. Praise the Lord. And don't do and don't struggle with the same thing over and over again. Uh, and, and be here next year and still struggling with the same. Don't, don't do that. You're doing an injustice to yourself. God, because we're always being changed from glory to glory. There's change taking place all the time. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is moving. Get in the move with Him. He's moving. Don't be left behind. And fear and doubt will weigh you down. Get out of it. Get free from it. God has brought us out of Egypt into the promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey with all the blessings. Father, we just love you. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for the privilege that we have that we get to serve you. That we get to confess the same words that you have given to us. Yo, we get to confess those words. And also, too, we get to experience the power of those words that will make a difference in our lives so we can continue to become more like you, Father. Father, I pray and believe, Lord, for every person to get this, to get this deep within their spirit. Holy Spirit, get on them. Let it become real. Quicken them. Make it alive in them so they will begin to walk this out and speak those things that you say to speak because those are words of life. We thank you, Father, and we give you praise for what you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.